straight ahead, just inside the city limits of simple living. Find out how you can live more simply in the city. Simple Living is made possible by NCFI Polyurethanes, maker of insulation and cushioning products for home and industry. NCFI, a whole new comfort level for you and for the world. Additional funding was provided by Duke Energy and the following. Hi, I'm Wanda Urbanska. Because I live in a small North Carolina town, some big city folks have said, Wanda, living simply is something you can do, but it's impossible in the city. Certainly, most of us do live in cities. The vast majority of Americans live in major metropolitan areas, Chicago, St. Louis, Los Angeles. The list goes on globally for the first time in human history, more than half of us live in cities. So when someone says to me, simple living is only for small towners and rural folks, that gets my attention. Do I agree with them? No. But because of these demographics and because of the environmental crises we all face, the imperatives and rewards of a simpler life must be realized not only in Mayberry, USA, but in the big cities as well. And they can be. You know, I lived in New York City for two years, and I lived here in Los Angeles for six years. Believe me, I'm no stranger to the pressures of urban life. And to paraphrase that old ad campaign, big city life is what's for dinner. For most of us, the urban grind is what's on the everyday menu. Here in coastal San Diego, due to rising ocean levels associated with global warming, residents have an added incentive to live more simply and sustainably. Certainly, many Americans enjoy visiting San Diego, generating our share of carbon to get here. And most people I've talked with like living in this city. But do folks like James Allen and Jeanette Bonds, who live downtown, uh, I mean, we certainly consume more than we probably should. Right. But uh, we do things like not drive a car very frequently, ride bikes, take the train, alternate transportation is a uh, very big part of our lives. So it sounds like living simply and sustainably is part of your ethic yeah. and your family. Mm -hmm. Something you want to pass on to your daughters? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> now, what's also encouraging is this. Not only are individuals who live in cities starting to rethink how they want to live, but cities, entire cities, are taking action. Every year, the World Watch Institute publishes its internationally acclaimed State of the World Report. This recent issue is devoted to, quote, unquote, our urban future. Christopher Flavin is president of the World Watch Institute. Uh, but the bulk of the world's uh, resources and energy are consumed either in or for um, meeting the needs of, of people that live in, in cities. So the, 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 the fight for sustainability for the world will be in large measure, not entirely, but in large measure won or lost. Uh, in, in cities. Uh, we've seen uh, the world's mayors uh, become a leading progressive voice, not only on local environmental issues, but, but oddly on global environmental issues as well. Here in Los Angeles, the mayor has thrown down the gauntlet, declaring that LA, of all places, will become America's most environmentally friendly city. Indeed, whether it's in sidewalks or skyscrapers, public transportation or biker and walker friendly streets, investment in renewables or energy efficiency, open spaces or waste reduction, clean air and water or healthy food, 
Many American cities are working overtime to come clean and go green. Los Angeles has plenty of competition, as Mayor Will Wynn of Austin explained to me. Well, and also we're very proud that we're taking land use uh, strategies to talk about simple living. And for instance, we have about 10,000 residential units that are on the ground or now under construction in our downtown. So literally tens of thousands of citizens are moving back into our urban core, as I have. And so I have a six block walk to work each morning. How and, long and does it meet. take you? Oh, it takes 10 or 12 minutes. Oh. Uh, there's also a new farmer's market in our downtown. And so as people can also change, literally even change sort of where and how they live, your life can be so much simpler. In Minneapolis, Mayor R.T. Rybeck isn't conceding anything to Austin. Minneapolis sits in an area surrounded by farms. Uh, we're doing more now to be able to do partnerships between a sustainable grower using organic produce in central Minnesota and bringing that into the center of the city to our customers. That's rehealing the connection between city and suburb that really needs to happen. On energy strategy, uh, we're looking at local based energy uh, policies from biomass to hydropower, things that we can actually do in the city that may not be on the grid. We, uh, we would love to be a simple living city. I wish our country was a little bit closer to being a simple living country, but I think more and more big cities are saying that they can take the lead on everything from consuming less to um, uh, having an impact on global warming. But of all the American cities setting the bar for sustainability, among them Seattle, New York, and San Francisco as well, it's arguable that Chicago, with its critical mass of can-do leaders, is right at the top. Do you think Chicago's leading the nation? Oh, absolutely. I think we're going to end up leading the world one day in this regard. Uh, we're, as Americans, we're a little bit slow to the picnic, but uh, I think once Americans get the hang of it, we're, we've got a lot of creative, innovative, and um, really kind of uh, fun solutions to offer to the world. Who would have thought it? Stormy, husky, brawling, wrote poet Carl Sandburg about Chicago. Hog butcher for the world, city of the big shoulders. But Chicago was the first city to charge higher vehicle registration fees for SUVs. It's Chicago that requires all new city-owned buildings to meet green design and energy efficiency standards. It's Chicago that boasts 7,300 acres of parkland, including 49 specially protected natural habitats. Smack dab in the middle of all the green fun is Mayor Richard M. Daley. Greenest mayor in the country, Mayor Richard M. Daley. Give the mayor a platform and he'll tell you about everything from retrofitted school buses that reduce emissions to solar panels in affordable housing developments to green business strategies. It is our responsibility, individual citizens, uh, CEOs, school children, Everyone who wants to get involved can inv get involved this month called Earth Month Activities. As commissioner of the city's Department of the Environment, Sadhu Johnson has played a pivotal role in painting Chicago green. Well, on Earth Day, Mayor Daley asked Chicagoans to take an environmental pledge, and the pledge has five areas that uh, we ask people to do. There's really five simple things. The first is in energy, and we ask people to change four light bulbs to compact fluorescence over the next year. And if ever Chicago were to do that, we'd save enough energy to power, to light about 1.5 million households. We'd be reducing emissions the equivalent of about 81,000 cars. So a significant contribution to the environment. We ask everyone to turn the water off and to brush their teeth. And if ever a Chicagoan did that, we'd save about uh, 33,000 uh, Olympic-sized swimming pools worth of water. And we ask people to reduce waste by taking um, canvas or cloth shopping bags to the store instead of taking plastic bags. And if every Chicagoan did that, we'd reduce about 601 million shopping bags from going being used. We ask people to adopt or to plant a tree, and uh, of course that'll improve air quality. And then we ask people to offset one trip per month from a car to either public transit or to walking or biking. Sadhu is particularly proud of Chicago's Green Roofs program, the largest in the country, with more than 2.5 million square feet of green roofs and growing. This garden is on top of City Hall. Why would Chicago want to put in this roof garden to City Hall? Well, roof gardens solve a whole number of our problems in the city. Um, 
cities across the country, not just Chicago, face urban heat island problems, stormwater problems, and a general lack of access to green space. Um, so green roofs help to solve those problems. They absorb stormwater and they hold it for a 48-hour period, so we get less, less of a surge to the storm sewer system, and that, that helps us to reduce flooding. Then uh, it helps the temperature of the roof. The green roof in the summer would be about 80 or 90 degrees on the surface, whereas the black roof on a, the other side of the building, the county side, will be 160 degrees. So it's a swing of 70, 60 to 70 degree swing in the summer, which makes it easier to cool the building, but it also keeps the ambient environment around the building cooler. It also helps to filter the air, which is an air quality problem, so there are chronic issues that the city face. Greening the Windy City finds another champion in Eric Olson as Green Projects Administrator for Chicago Apartment Construction and Permits. Eric presides over a wonderfully innovative program. The Green Permit Program is really the uh, city's main uh, incentive for green building. The main incentive that we offer is faster permits, you know, especially for large and complex buildings. You know, we permit 60-story office towers, not unregularly here in Chicago. It's, if we can help them speed up their permits, that's a major incentive to them. So they get kind of jumped to the front of the line and kind of a lot of special treatment. All the city-owned buildings are required to be built to the lead leadership in energy environmental design standard. It's really a national standard for green building. Um, you hear this term also called the Chicago standard because in uh, 2004 the mayor announced that the city would now require all of its own public buildings to be built green. At the Chicago Center for Green Technology, developers, builders and the general public learn green building fundamentals in a place that was once headquarters for the Kraft Corporation. Stephen Bell is director at the center. We've acted as a case study or a prototype for green buildings for the city of Chicago for the past five years. The knowledge and skill to go green, that's what students learn here. We have uh, quite a number of builders that come in to take um, part in our programs. Mm -hmm. We have a program called Green Tech U, which is a certificate program. Uh, we have different tracks, uh, architecture, engineering, green building, uh, interior design, green business, and do it yourself. So our builder, a lot of the builders will come in to get basic information about how to incorporate green into their business. But of all the great work going on in Chicago, the job I'd want to have most belongs to this man, the man with the organic green thumb. Once a farmer in Kansas, Ken Dunn, director of the nonprofit City Farm Project, now does his farming in Chicago? Well, perhaps it's appropriate that the word Chicago in the original Native American Algonquian language means garlic field. Another winter growing is uh, the garlic. garlic over here. Uh, the garlic, of course, is uh, under uh, heavy uh, straw mulch, and it does most of its growing below ground during the winter. But as soon as it uh, warms up a bit, it's the first up. So here we are, latter part of April, and uh, it's growing quite nicely. You might say that City Farm is literally a movable feast. City Farm operates on the audacious idea that you can have a farm on a vacant lot owned by the city. Then, when the city sells the lot, Ken and his staff just move the farm, soil and all, to another vacant lot. It's mostly rubble in vacant lots, and then when you test the soil, it uh, shows up with some heavy metal, lead, uh, cadmium or something that you wouldn't want to grow in. So we developed the process of sealing the vacant lot with a layer of clay and then bringing in a, a row of uh, compost and then held in place by a row of wood chips. So we're now uh, 24 inches above the original layer clay. that's uh, sealed by clay. We do provide jobs uh, for people who are local. Um, each acre can be from five to ten jobs, and we have a commitment to sell at a farm stand in each uh, farm so people have access to fresh vegetables. To be able to pay a living wage, we sell about half of our product to high-end restaurants, and they pay quite well for it. City Farm, one of many Chicago success stories, but so too are the lives of many Chicagoans themselves. Folks like Jane Zawadowski and her family who match their city's progressive spirit with simpler lifestyles as individuals and as families.
It's not that Jane isn't busy. As a mother of three who works part-time and whose husband teaches in the public schools, Jane's not exactly lying in a hammock eating bonbons all day. And she knows that city life can be complex. My sense is that the city offers so many things to do that, first of all, people can feel overwhelmed with the choices of activities for children, events going on around town, things to buy, um, ways to improve, people to hang out with. So it can get overwhelming. And it can lead to a very, very busy life. You know, that's a word that people use so much is that they're busy. And I think that it takes a real effort to simplify, to slow down, to get a sense of consciousness about where you're headed and where you're going. That sense of consciousness translates to a value system expressed in those concrete choices Jane makes for her family and for herself. One of those choices is belonging to a membership farm, or CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. The family visits the farm frequently, which has impacted Jane's children. They definitely know where their food comes from, and they love to plant seeds and be outside. Another simple living choice is in how the family meals come together. When you look down our pantry row, you see big glass jars of this kind of bean, this kind of bean, and a third kind of bean. And you'll see lots of bulk packages of pasta and different types of spices, and we do definitely prepare all of our own food. I think that there's definitely a connection between my Polish heritage and simple living. It translates into not being able to waste food, for example. I know that, that was, there was a big shortage of that during World War II, and I cannot waste food. Even when I go to a restaurant, I have my Tupperware, and people give me their leftovers. I have some friends who know this about me, and they will say, Jane, here we go, here are my leftovers, and it's fine. And I really try to reclaim that and invert the relationship such that it's a logical, normal thing to do is not waste food and, you know, just to be normal about it and um, not waste. I do think that there are ways to have simple living happen in a city pretty easily. I think that one obvious thing is public transportation and the fact that there's a certain density in a city. Things aren't spread out as much. Even in a suburb, such as Oak Park, things are pretty compact. I think that that also is ecologically sound because you take up less space per person and you can get places you know, rather quickly, especially if you go by foot or by bike. For Sadhu and Manda Johnson and their daughter, Zella Rose, life in Chicago can be car free. We don't have a family car at all. And I have other friends when we had a baby who are like, oh, you're, you're gonna have to get a car. And this has been a really interesting thing for me because I don't have access to a car other than through something called car sharing, which is a program that allows you to, to um, basically invest in a part, a share of a car. So, um, but I almost never even use that because the baby loves transit and I can attend to her in a way that I couldn't if I were in a car. Again, not having the car means that if Amanda needs to pick up groceries during the week, she'll walk to the little health food store that's down the street and carry the groceries back with the kid and it's an outing for them and it's, it's a great way to support a local business rather than driving further. So you end up supporting the local economy in your immediate area too. Talk about walking the talk, not just with transportation, but remarkably in every aspect of their urban lives. The Johnson family is living the green life from hanging their wash on clotheslines and in general using less electricity to a dishwasher and toilet designed to conserve water, to listening to a wind-up solar radio, to compact, space-saving storage closets, to drying and reusing Ziploc bags, to minimizing use of paper products. Whether that's simple things like having napkins, um, cloth napkins, which um, it's funny because some people come over and they think it's very formal to have cloth napkins because everyone's grandma had cloth napkins, right? And they just never thought about doing anything else. And for us, it, you know, we came about it because it seemed very simple to us to have cloth napkins. You throw them in the wash, you have more cloth napkins. And a lot of it's very easy. It's very easy to recycle these days. Um, particularly, I mean, even in a city, and some people would say, oh, we don't have space. But once you decide that it's a challenge and it's a goal, there's always space. Your garbage can can be half the size and you use the rest of the space for your recycling can. Okay, great, but along did come baby, five-month-old Zella Rose. 
And but with Zella Rose came diapers. So for me, I feel like cloth is obviously um, a greener way to go if you choose to put in the time to make it thus. So that means not doing big, huge loads of laundry with you know two diapers in it and nothing else. Um, so it, that takes a little bit more effort. You know, we soak our diapers first before we put them in loads. We do full loads when we do it. We do a lot of cold wash when we can. Um, we do baking soda and vinegar, really natural, easier ways to wash them. This here is a sprayer. It's separate from the sink, but it's actually, we use this for cleaning the diapers, the cloth diapers. Um, we'll, we'll be able to clean them over the toilet so we can get anything out of there. But then this is a called, it's called Sink Positive, is the company that makes it. And as you know, they're common in other countries. Flush. First water comes out of the tank, quick. Exactly. And how is it cold? Oh, it's cold. Carol Holst's daughter is grown now, so no baby warming parties for Carol. My friend, who recently edited this wonderful book, Get Satisfied, how 20 people like you found the satisfaction of enough has lived simply in Los Angeles for 37 years. Carol drives as little as possible, but when she does, it's mind over traffic. Oh, stress with driving, yes, that could be annoying to some people, but I simply don't notice uh, if people are going to cut me off, if traffic is backed up, I am just uh, able uh, to shine it on uh, and uh, perhaps do a little bit of uh, very aware meditating. If that's uh, not mixing my metaphors, I am aware certainly of the fact that I'm driving, but I'm also meditating and uh, putting myself in another world uh, such that just like standing in line, um, if there's a, uh, a long line that I have to stand in, it really, as long as I budgeted the time, it does not annoy me. I simply wouldn't waste my life being annoyed about things like that. Wow, don't you love that? And here are a few more great ideas to live more pleasurably in the city. Don't just automatically buy books. Use your public library, not just to save money, but to meet interesting people, to build community. For that matter, why not join a book club? Where is it written that you have to read a great book and not share that wonderful experience? As Carol Holst has done in Los Angeles, and as Jane Zawadowski has done in Chicago, build a support system in your city of people who share your values. One of the best ways to live more simply in the city is to have regular potluck dinners, share a meal, save the expense of eating out, exchange terrific ideas. What more can you ask for? Try out unexplored dimensions of yourself take a painting class, take up flamenco dancing, for heaven's sake. You only go around once. She with the most toys at the end of the game does not win. And if you can dance, then surely, no matter how little space you have, you can have fun with urban gardening. Even if it's just patio tomatoes, that's homegrown tomatoes that don't taste like tennis balls. And don't just throw up your hands. If something needs changing where you live, get involved. Join forces with your neighbors. Throw that weight around and become a community player. Life in the city. With apologies to that old ad campaign, this is not your father's city treadmill. This is your life. Connect with it. Make the city your city. Be kind to yourself, be kind to your kids, teach your children well, as the old song goes. Someday, they'll thank you for it. Thanks for watching our program on simple living in the city. But whether you live in a city of 8 million or a town of 8,000, keep it green and keep it simple. A very small planet will thank you. Until next time, I'm Wanda Urbanska. So, to live more simply in the city, become a joiner, join a book club, do potluck dinners, create a network and make an impact on the life of your community. Cut down on energy and water use. In conservation, nothing's too small to make a difference. As much as possible, eat locally grown, not long distance food. And finally, BYOB, bring your own reusable bags whenever you shop. 
You can find out more information about Simple Living by visiting our website at www.simplelivingtv.net. Simple Living is made possible by NCFI Polyurethanes, maker of insulation and cushioning products for home and industry. NCFI, a whole new comfort level for you and for the world. Additional funding was provided by Duke Energy and the following. Two companion books by Wanda Urbanska and Frank Levering are available. Simple Living for $12.95 plus shipping and handling, and Nothing's Too Small to Make a Difference for $21.95 plus shipping and handling. Each book contains stories and tips for living a simpler life. To order, call toll-free at 888-789-7475 or order online at simplelivingtv.net.